Welcome back. Making news this morning, the federal indictment against Sean Combs has been unsealed this morning, revealing the rapper has been arrested on sex trafficking charges. The music mogul has since pleaded guilt, not guilty at a Manhattan courthouse, but will be held without bail. Yes, yeah, so for more on this, we're joined by legal affairs journalist Megan Cunoff, who is in Los Angeles this morning. Megan, thank you for being here. So, as much as you can, can you talk us through some of these charges? Yeah, he is facing three very serious crimes. One is sex trafficking by force. Another is transportation to engage in prostitution. And that's across state lines, which, of course, gives federal jurisdiction on these charges. And another is racketeering conspiracy, which is a charge that we've seen originated in the prosecutions of the mafia and the mob. And this is an organized crime charge that basically alleges he led a 15-year criminal enterprise that included uh, these sex trafficking allegations. Uh, these are monstrous allegations. No one could argue with that. And the indictment alleges that this has gone on for decades. Talk us through the time, the sort of frame of time here. Yes, they, uh, the indictment says beginning as early or in at least uh, 2009 and going up to 2018 and beyond, this was going on. And this concerns uh, his his relationship with his, his longtime former girlfriend, Cassie, who was not named in the indictment. But this uh, video that, we're, that we saw a portion of and that made so much news a few months ago of uh, Diddy actually assaulting her in a Los Angeles hotel back in 2016, that is actually mentioned in the indictment here. And Diddy's lawyer said after court today that the case is pretty much built around uh, Cassie's, uh, Cassie's story and what happened to Cassie. I mean, it's a pretty horrific vision we're seeing it right here, mm. right now. But it's hard to understand that, you know, if indeed he is guilty and it has to go through the process and due process, how Sean Combs has gotten away with this for so long. Yes, I, I, I think a, a lot of people are, are are wondering that just when this was, you know, out, out in the open like this. But the indictment and the, the criminal charges also do address that because they say that he used his criminal enterprise, which is people around him, to to try to keep this a secret that he they mentioned the video and say that he actually offered a, a hotel employee a stack of cash to to keep this quiet and that he used his security specialist and really everyone on his team around him was uh, participated in in this conspiracy and it really lays out that there could be some people considered unindicted co-conspirators here legally who might end up testifying against him at mm. trial and there are allegations that he was filming people to use against them to keep them quiet is that right? Yes, the, uh, they uh, they talk about the electronic recording he did of these uh, uh, sexual encounters he had that they they call freak offs in the in the indictment. But then the indictment also talks about how when in late 2023, when this was all becoming public after Cassie had sued and there were so many lawsuits accumulating, he had actually called some uh, victims and witnesses and went so far as to record himself talking to them about staying quiet, trying to get stories straight. And it, it doesn't straight up say this, but it indicates that law enforcement officers had to have found those recordings when they were searching through all his stuff uh, during the raids back in March. Well, for now, he says he's innocent uh, and his legal team says they will appeal this bail order. How likely is it that he could be successful and be released on bail? I think there's always a chance, although it is just not favorable to him, especially with the sex trafficking charge. They talked about some other high profile people that we've seen charged with that same crime, like uh, Jeffrey Epstein, uh, Jelaine Maxwell, uh, who were held uh, pre-trial. And the, there's a presumption on that charge that the person will be held pre-trial. And the judge today said they had not uh, overcome that presumption. So I'm wondering what could change in their argument or what could change in the other judge judge's perception tomorrow that would change that. And Me I, I guess we're going to find out. Well, Megan, just quickly before we uh, let you go, if he is found guilty, what are we looking at here? How many years? This is a potential life sentence with the racketeering conspiracy charge, the sex trafficking charge. We're definitely looking at a, at a very hefty sentence. A lot of the times we don't actually see the maximum penalty imposed here, but I think even without the maximum penalty, this is still a significant prison sentence, uh, possibly decades in prison for Me somebody Me who's already 54. Indeed. Megan Cunef, we'll leave it there, but we'd love to uh, you know, touch back with you once this is all starting to progress. We see it in court. Appreciate your time. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd love to keep you...